Hey guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC mom who loves science, here today to bring you CC Cycle 1, Week 6, Science Experiments. We've got two experiments today from Van Cleves, number 65, Fooling Your Tongue, and number 66, Trickery. So before we get started, we'll go over our scientific method. The scientific method is question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, conclusion. All right, so to get started today, we'll start, you could do either one first. Um, we'll start today with the fooling your tongue. And for this experiment, you'll need um, an apple or two, depending on how big your slices are. Maybe an apple slicer or knife. And cutting board or plate and then you might have um, paper towels or little small plates so that you could give each student a slice of apple and you'll also need some vanilla and you can use an eyedropper or I'm just gonna pour drops onto my cotton ball but you'll also need a, a cotton ball for each student so for this experiment you're gonna give each student a slice of apple and you will have them take a bite And you can ask them what they taste. Does it taste like an apple? Is it what you're familiar with? And so what you're going to do next is you're going to give them each a cotton ball. And you're going to put a drop or two of vanilla on the cotton ball. And they're not going to touch it to their nose, but they're just going to smell it. Smell the vanilla. Okay, and then I smell the vanilla while taking a bite of the apple. And so you can ask them if what their hypothesis is. Is that going to change anything about what the apple tastes like? And if so, what will the apple taste like? So you're going to smell the vanilla while you take a bite. I'm getting the vanilla flavor, even though I'm eating an apple. I still kind of taste the apple, but uh, the vanilla flavor is also there. And so we're going to talk about why is that? We're going to ask questions. Why is that? Um, well, our tongues, we have taste buds on our tongues, and it can taste, you know, certain things like sweet, sour, bitter, salty and but our nose is what helps us taste you know deeper richer you know taste is because of our sense of smell so Nicolium I'll just show this graphic she shows your tongue and the taste buds and how our brain gets all this information when we eat something so we get the taste from our taste buds we get the smell of it we look at it, like they have a piece of pecan pie, so what it looks like, it's golden brown. We have the sound, the crunch, and the texture of it, and all these things help our brain interpret what it is that we're eating. And so what we just did with the cotton ball and the vanilla is we tricked our brain um, into what it thought we were eating. So we were still eating an apple, nothing about that changed but we were smelling something different. We didn't smell the apple smell so strong. We smelled the vanilla. And that changed what our brain thought that it tasted like. So that's kind of a fun experiment um, to trick your brain into thinking that you're eating something else. So that is that experiment. And then we're gonna do uh, number 66, which is trickery. So you can have each of the students do this experiment and give them a piece of paper and a ruler and a pen or a pencil. What we're going to do is we're going to draw two parallel lines so they're not going to cross and they'll be about four inches long. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'll do it about four inches long. And it says to draw them about an inch apart, so I will do that. Okay, 
So I'm going to hold this up and have the students look at the lines and say, you know, are those lines the same length? And so I think we can all agree we can measure them. They're the same length. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make arrows on the lines, but we're going to have them going different ways. So I'm going to show you. So one of the lines, you're going to draw your arrow shapes going out like that. And then the other line will be opposite. So now, when we look at the two lines, did, do they look like they're different lengths now? And they do. But we know we measured the two lines and they were the same length. All we did was add these, these little angle shapes to make them look like arrows. But why does, which one looks long, you ask them which one looks longer, but to me, this one looks longer than this one. And so we're tricking our eyes, our brains are, are interpreting it as something else because of these these lines. So because these lines are going out, our brain is kind of continuing on that those directions. So it's easy for our eyes to just go, okay, this kind of goes on a little longer. But this one, because it abruptly changes direction, it's opposite. Our brain kind of knows, okay, I'm stopping there. That's that's the length of that line. It's not easily drawn out because of these shapes. So it's just a trick for our eyes. We're kind of tricking our brains. And so another fun thing you could do is show them, this is called an optical illusion. I'll start with that. So an optical illusion, it's kind of showing our, our making our brain think something different than what we're actually seeing. And so Nicole Liam has some really cool examples of optical illusions. So this one is just a flat floor, but they painted it to look like there was a dip in it. And that was to keep people from running in the halls. Um, this one, it says that, you know, if you look at it closely, does it look like it's moving? And like this one, it can look like two things. Do you see a bird or do you see a rabbit? And then this is an, an example. This is a butterfly, but th does it look like a snake? So I can see a snake head or an owl. It's actually a butterfly. So even, um, you know, insects or animals, they can use optical illusions. Like another example is a zebra and their stripes. And when they're running in a herd, all those stripes kind of blend together. And so when a lion is trying to find out which zebra he wants to catch, he sees all these, um, all the stripes and it, it just kind of, tricks his mind and so it's hard for him to know where one zebra starts and ends and so you go find some really fun examples of optical illusions and so it's it's just fun to to think about how sometimes what we perceive or what we think we see is not not actually what's there so this is a fun one all the students can do and so have fun with week six science